Greetings, mighty companions. Hello, friends and family. How are you doing? Here we are again on another Tuesday night, A Course in Miracle time. This is what we do on Tuesday nights. And Mondays. And Mondays and Sundays. You, you might guess we love A Course in Miracles. And we've <laughs> noticed that several of you do too. Yeah. Because I, we see your names show up every week, every night with us, and we appreciate it so much. Speaking of yeah. one of our constant uh, companions, Peter is here already. One of our mighty companions, Peter. Lovely to see your name. Yeah. So here we are, and um, and Greg and I are doing, this is our Transforming Relationships Through a Course in Miracles. Yeah. Because that's what we've done, and that's what we're doing, and that's what um, keeps our relationship growing and thriving and healing. And um, A Course in Miracles is what keeps our relationship, um, uh, we keep having a relationship through A Course in Miracles where it gets better and better and better, where miracles become a natural thing. It used to be other people would ask you, you know, how lucky we really are. Yeah, are you guys just lucky? And now, sometimes I want to ask myself that. <laughs> but the truth is, is that there's no luck to it. This is a course in miracles. This is a curriculum in how to have an experience where miracles are as natural as breathing. And imagine having a relationship like that. Imagine having a relationship where miracles are natural, where, you know, I'll say to Greg, what are the odds that this Airbnb was available like, still for two months? What's the odds? And Greg goes, for us, really good. You know, so because and miracles are natural, we've come to experience that in our relationship. And isn't it nice to know that, <clears throat> you know, it seems like in the world some people get more of the luck than some of the other people get. Like, you could look at our life right now and go, good morning, Ram. You could look at our life and go, wow, it just seems like everything flows just perfect for you. Well, I'd be happy too if everything went just so smoothly for me. And A Course in Miracles, if you break the title down, that's really what it is. It's A Course in Happiness. Mm -hmm. A course and things going smooth. Mm -hmm. The way that you and I have learned to do it, things don't go smooth mm -hmm. because we're constantly projecting out into our experience a horrible experience mm -hmm. because it's what we believe we deserve. It's what we expect. And it's what we expect. Yeah. And so this is a course in miracles. And A Course in Miracles has a lot to say about relationships. As a matter of fact, relationships are actually the cornerstone of the curriculum of A Course in Miracles. And so it has a lot to say about the value and the necessity of relationships to spirit and spirit's goal of healing the planet. It actually says that, that the relationships that we have Spirit wants our relationships because it's our relationships that Spirit uses to heal the planet. Imagine that, right? And so... And uses our relationship to demonstrate what God intends for all of everybody. us to have. Yes, everybody. A, a life full of joy, contentment, abundance, peace, peace so. safety. That's what, that's what God wants for everybody and Spirit uses our relationships in order to demonstrate that to all of mankind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, all right, so we're gonna do uh, We Let Spirit Choose through the Random Number Generator app, what we are going to read. And so it looks like we're gonna be in the text. And so, and so we say, Spirit decide for us what we need to hear from A Course in Miracles. You know us best. And then we go tap. And it is chapter number seven. seven. Lucky number seven. I'm Lucky. I'm actually happy to hear that because <laughs> I was so lately. Mm -hmm. The random number generator mm -hmm. hasn't been so random at all. And last night Anna's class 
uh, downtown Denver. Mm -hmm. She uh, did random number generator, and it gave her the same number. Same you know, section, you know, same chapter. It's a pretty big book. It's a really big book. And the random number generator scrambles and scrambles mm -hmm. and comes up with the same number mm -hmm. that uh, it uh, came up with the week before. The week before. But then one of the students in class mentioned that we didn't even get close to finish. being done the week before. And so it was like Spirit's way of saying, Let's finish. Yeah, just pick back Why up. Why don't you just finish that section? Where we were at. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And that's what we did. All right. So you, as you see, it's, it's, a, it's the never random number generator. Okay. So why don't you hit the randomize yeah. button? So there's 11. 11. Mm -hmm. And number eight. eight. So, so we're going to be in chapter seven. Chapter seven, section, section eight, eight, in the blue covered in, edition, the blue covered which tonight. is what we call the foundation for inner peace uh, version. And I'm going to see if I can find it while we're scrolling around and Oh, I looking. love it. The what unbelievable it? belief. The unbelievable I, belief. And I know it, it's not interesting. It's not the same title, but uh, you are you in, are you in chapter seven? You, yeah. yeah okay. So the first line. So this is chapter seven, section eight, and it's called the unbelievable belief. What is that? The unbelievable belief. What could that be? Did you know there's a belief that is unbelievable? Yeah. All right. And the first line. It is case, the same. No. 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 It's, it's the, here's the first. Eight. Here's we the first. Have said that the Holy, oh. And the first line is, we have said that without projection, there can be no anger. What? What? Uh, without projection, there can be no anger. Are you saying that, that anger is projection? You can't have anger without projection. Are you angry? That implies projection. Right. Wow. I, you know, my my belief is when I'm angry, that that's when I believe I'm the most right. And of course, the miracles are saying actually, when you're angry, that's when you're most wrong. That's when you're projecting. Well, just think of what projection is. I mean, projection is what gives us all the information that we think mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Wow. So. I'm going to look while you read. Okay, great. So I'm going to start. And so we are in chapter, uh, what is it, seven, seven, section eight, the unbelievable belief in the blue covered edition, which is the foundation for inner peace version. And if anybody <clears throat> is able to, and if people for you to do it, type in chapter seven, blue book edition, section eight. Yes. Thank you for that. Hi, Jeannie. Lovely to see you. Hi, Diane. Lovely to see you. And hi, Ram. And Ram is asking that we would translate it into Hindi. We'll, and we'll work on that. It <laughs> won't happen soon. Probably. We're still probably working on learning English. So <laughs> we were just in Mexico, and that was an incredible challenge. Yeah, uh, trying to, to learn Spanish. Of course, in Miracles Teachers in Mexico, that was an interesting yeah. challenge. <laughs> we never got that, so. Yeah, so, anyway, but we can you pass know. that request along, Ron. We're going to pass that request along to Spirit. Yeah, okay. and Spirit, then maybe, who yeah, knows? Well, no, I mean, look, we, you know, we, we, we don't put any limits on Spirit's never ability. Never limit Spirit. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, here we go. The unbelievable belief. We have said that without projection, there can be no anger, but it is also true that without extension, there can be no love. Why? Because projection and extension reflect a fundamental law of the mind, which means a fundamental law that always operates. All right, we're talking about fundamental law in the universe. And what's that fundamental law? that your mind is either projecting or extending all the time. Your mind is either going out with extension, extension of love, or it's 
projecting what you believe. And that's a fundamental law of the mind. Your mind and thought is always going forth. It's always going forth. Your thoughts never stay in just your mind alone. And that's the truth. There are no private thoughts. And they never stop. And they never stop. While you're sleeping, your mind is still going. That's exactly right. Hey, Zen, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Hi, sweetie. Good to see you. He says that, that if projection or extension is a fundamental law of mind that always operates. So whatever your mind is conceiving, it is extending or projecting. Uh, what, what, what if, uh, the thing we've been learning, there are no private thoughts. I am not alone in experiencing the effects of what I'm thinking, the effects of what I'm seeing. Mm. Yeah. And uh, Nay says, now if you really knew that, if you really knew that there, that you have no private thoughts and you are not alone in experiencing the effects of your seeing at all, of course a miracle says, you, you would be uh, not so tolerant of mind wandering. If you knew that whatever you're thinking, whatever you're experiencing, you, somebody else is experiencing with you, you might be a little more like, hmm, let me notice what I'm thinking. Is this really what I want to be offering to mankind? Is this really what I want to be giving to others? Really, is it? Mm, I don't know. So that's, the, that's one of the blessings of remembering that we have no private thoughts. Every... It, Whatever it is that you're thinking is going forth. It's not staying in your mind alone. Now, it says this fundamental law of, quick, of thinking. Uh -huh. our Irene, we're in chapter 7 of the Blue Book edition mm -hmm. and uh, section number 8. Which is called the Unbelievable Belief. Okay? And, and it says that this law this fundamental law of the mind is the law by which you create and were created. This fundamental law of the mind, it is the law that unifies reality and keeps everything in the mind of God. All right, we're talking about a fundamental law of mind. That sounds pretty important. That sounds pretty fundamental. And it says... To the ego, the, this fundamental law of mind is perceived as a means of getting rid of something it doesn't want. Okay? To the ego, it's like, oh, the fundamental law of mind, I don't like what I'm thinking, I'm going to project it out and get rid of it and see it in them and that instead of me. Or as it says here, that it's extending. Yeah. So projecting and extending out. Exactly. The, the ego projects and our spirit extends. So the ego uses the fundamental law of mind to get rid of something that it doesn't want. So the ego is all about projecting. Okay. So the ego is like, I don't like the way I feel right now. I don't like this about myself. I'm going to project it out, which means see it in everyone and everything besides myself. Okay. So, so it seems like in projection that we're extending. It seems it like seems it. It seems like but that we're extending because in projection, look around us. We can see everything that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like we're creating. Right. But we're not. perhaps not. And to our spirit, our higher self, the fundamental law of mind is the law of sharing by which we give what we value in order to keep it in our mind. So there's a fundamental law of the mind going on. And the ego's like, oh, goody. That means I'm going to use this fundamental law of mind to get rid of what I don't want and see it in everybody else. And spirit's like, and I'm going to use this fundamental law of mind to share with others what I value so that I can keep it. Mm -hmm. So Spirit's like, I want to keep love. I want to keep peace. I want to keep innocence. 
it makes me feel better. So I'm going to give the peace and the love and the forgiveness that I, I'm going to share that so I can keep it. And the ego's like, I'm going to project what I don't like in order to get rid of it. Okay? Both the ego and our higher self are using the same fundamental law of the mind. They're just using it for different purposes. Mm -hmm. But both of them, uh, but the fundamental law of mind is whatever is going on in your mind is going to go, is going to move forth from your mind to others. Okay? Okay. Then it says, to our higher self, the Holy Spirit, it says this fundamental law of mind is the, is the law of extension. To the ego, this fundamental law of mind is the law of deprivation. And so the ego therefore produces, and so the, this fundamental law of mind either produces abundance or scarcity depending on how you choose to apply this fundamental law of mind. Now the choice is up to you. How are you going to use this fundamental law of mind? Whatever you're thinking, it's going to it's going to move from you to the world. How are you going to use it? The choice is up to you. But it's not up to you to decide whether or not you're going to use this fundamental law of mind. In other words, every mind must project or extend. Because Extending or projecting is how the mind lives, and every mind is life. Wow. So the mind is not something that stays contained. You know, your mind is not something that is contained within your body. Your mind is something that's always moving forth. It's always extending or projecting. Your mind isn't contained within your brain. Your mind isn't contained within your body. Mind is something that, that extends or projects. That's the nature of life. Life is not something that can be contained. You cannot be contained. We cannot be contained. What we are is something that that always is expanding and extending or projecting. That's the nature of life. Wow. So life comes from yours and my thoughts from our mind. And how interesting, it's like we're, our mind is like the water of the universe. Yes. It's watering and giving allowance for things to come into existence. Mm. I love that sentence at the beginning where it says, it is the law by which you create mm -hmm. and we're created. Yeah. We're told in A Course in Miracles that you and I are a thought mm -hmm. in the mind of God. He said that was extended forth. Right. That's how, that's how we were created. God had a thought and that thought couldn't be contained and that thought extended forth. And that was us. That's how we were born. That's how we were created. And so naturally, we would be creating the same way Creator yes, exactly. creates, in the same way we were created. Exactly. And it's good to know how you were created, and it's good to know how you create, just in case you were wanting to create something. Maybe you want to create a new life. Maybe you want to create a miracle way. Maybe you want to create some the good, the beautiful, and the holy. And as a matter of fact, the Course in Miracles says you were created to create. And unless you are creating, unless the, the thoughts that are in your mind are moving forth from your mind to create the good, the beautiful, and the holy, then you are not being what you were created to be, and you won't experience the fulfillment of, of being what you are. So it's good to hear about, uh, oh, I was created to be a creator. That's how I was created. I was created to be a creator. And unless I'm creating, I won't know what I am and I won't experience fulfillment. I, am I creating or am I projecting? Okay. 
We were created by extension, not rejection. At the beginning of the class here, we were talking about we're here in our new residence. It's a long story, but we have a residence in the mountains of an Airbnb that uh, we just laughed about saying that we put off for several weeks praying about asking spirit, should we get it, should we get it, you know, waiting for spirit's direction. And this whole time it stayed available and the price went down. Uh, <laughs> on both property, very strange. And we secured the rental uh, for the next two months. The, the thing that we were saying at the beginning of the class was not bragging about our life, but bragging about our life through A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. Exactly what it says here is the ego, which the ego is nothing but a belief system, right? Mm -hmm. The ego is a thought. Mm -hmm. It's a thought mm -hmm. in our mind. And in the middle of paragraph one here, we heard, to the ego, the law, this law, law. Our, that our mind, what our mind is doing, mm -hmm. is a law of depriving ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's always telling us we don't deserve something. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve that. You don't deserve to be happy. You don't deserve anything. You don't deserve anything except but to punishment. suffer. To suffer and to be punished. Mm -hmm. That's what the ego is, is a belief in the mind. And then we hear right after that, it therefore produces this law, abundance or scarcity, mm -hmm. depending on how you choose to apply the law. The fundamental law of the mind. Right. If you use the mind the way it's supposed to be used, mm -hmm. you will be experiencing abundance. Exactly. If you use the law the way it was not intended by mm, Creator, right. you will be experiencing a life depriving yourself of joy, of happiness, of peace, of contentment. Mm -hmm. And the neat thing is, is you can change it. Right. Just like you can turn off the hot water on the sink and turn on the cold yeah. if you want something else. Exactly. You can change it just like that just by changing how you're using your mind. Exactly, like the fund so-called fundamental law of gravity. You can use gravity for abundance, or you can use gravity for scarcity. Same law, same law, but different use. So your mind is always extending. Your mind is always extending because that's how your mind was created. How do you want to use the extension of your mind? Do you want to use that law to project what you don't like, what you want to get rid of? Or do you want to use that fundamental law of mind to extend as you were extended, to love and to give as you were loved and you were provided for? How do you want to use that? That's the question. All right, paragraph two. Hi, Irene, beautiful. Irene says the ego is nothing but a belief system that creates abundance or scarcity. Exactly. Beautiful. And uh, Sophia says, Sophia says. Now the ego, I think that was just a typo because I know Irene knows, but uh, the ego does not create abundance. It's only abundance right. it creates exactly. is abundant uh, garbage. Exactly. Right on. But depending on how we use the law mm -hmm. of our mind, we're going to either go with the ego's belief system, which mm -hmm. is going to create scarcity, or we're going to create abundance by using our mind as it was intended to. Exactly, I love that. If we use our minds in accordance with the way that our minds were created, um, if we use the fundamental law of mind as it was intended, the outcome is only abundance. And if we are experiencing deprivation or scarcity or lack in any way in our life, it means we are misusing the fundamental law of mind. In other words, instead of extending the love that I am, I'm projecting what I don't like. You know, sometimes, 
uh, we sit there and complain about what we don't like and we blame others for what we don't like, okay? That's projection. Okay? That's using the fundamental law of mind to project what we don't like and to blame what we don't like on others. Now, the other way, the other option is we could be like, hey, I'm a, I, have a, I have a very powerful mind. I was created by love. I have love in my mind. What would I like to experience? What would I like to experience in my life that's loving and joyful and abundant? And how can I help everybody else to have that too? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so one use of the law of mind is blaming and projecting what you don't like, blaming and complaining. Let's give a good example. Yeah, let's do. Okay, so we have our mind. Mm -hmm. You got your mind, I got my mind. <laughs> Everybody got do a he mind check. He said one mind. <laughs> Everybody got, you got your mind. Do you have your right mind? And just uh, any normal day like today. You know, Anna and I ordered some things on Best Buy and we're really hoping that our, our new tablet would come in before <laughs> tonight's class. Mm -hmm. And we also ordered a cover for the tablet to keep <laughs> it protected and everything. Well, it came in two different, from the same place, but in two different deliveries. The cover came on time, but the tablet didn't. Now, our mind can get upset about. Now that's just a little tiny example in life, but that's how it works, is whatever comes to us in our day, our constant opportunities of how are you going to use your mind. In other words, what belief system are you gonna put your mind in? Are you gonna put your mind in the belief system that, oh, the tablet didn't come in on time. God dang it. Dang it. God dang it, how come it? Now I throw a fork across the room and get upset. Mm -hmm. And again, this is just a little example, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. When things don't go well, mm -hmm. the way that we think they should go, mm -hmm. then our mind starts dictating to get upset, to mm -hmm. get angry, to start judging blaming. people, blaming. Amazon. That, that UPS driver that with UPS. Problems. Him, he on another donut break or what? <laughs> and or when the cover came in, I looked at. The, I happened to be on the driveway when the guy showed up, and I said, well, "Don't you have a second package?" <laughs> and he said, no, "No, that's it. No. If you have something else, it must be coming from another truck." And my mind immediately is thinking, "What a waste of gas!" That's ineffective. That is not very effective. And that was Greg using his the power of his mind for projection. Now, I will say that the mind, the reason those thoughts are coming up mm -hmm. is because that's how our mind was trained. Mm -hmm. But because, not because Greg is great, mm -hmm. not because the name Greg rhymes with great, <laughs> but because <laughs> I've been doing A Course of Miracles, mm -hmm. I know more than a few seconds later turned away from the driver, I really did, and I just took the packets, and I thanked Holy Spirit. I got part of the order, and I just thanked Spirit that things are going the way they're supposed to yes, go. Yes, exactly. And we don't have to understand it, you know, why didn't the other package come on the same delivery truck? You know, why would they send another truck that seemed, and coming up with all these so reasons. So much incompetence, All blah, these blah, blah, reasons blah. to be able to judge and condemn the situation. Project. But don't be bothered that you do that because we're all doing that. Mm -hmm. Be bothered if you don't stop yourself doing that. Exactly. When you catch yourself doing it and then you turn off that spigot on the sink, mm -hmm. that boiling hot water that you're getting ready to pour onto your experience, turn that off and turn the other one on, which is coming back to the mind that the belief system that you want to operate under, mm -hmm. which is all of the things under truth. Mm -hmm. Everything is helpful. Mm -hmm. Everything is working out for my good and purposes, for my joy and for my happiness. Even if I can't understand even it. Even if I can't see it, even if I don't get it. And as soon as I can come back to that mind, 
then that's the creation that I'm asking for. That's the experience that I'm asking for. And the only reason Anna and I seem like we're so abundant in our life more and more lately is because more and more lately we are applying the correct mindset to our daily experience. Exactly. Beautiful. And um, while you were talking, I, I saw our mind as as a um, as a, a power generator. That's what our mind is. It like generates power. It's like and it generates an amazing amount of power. It's like a it's like a powerful it is. It is. generator, unlimited generator. Our mind is an unlimited generator of power. <clears throat> now. Um, here's an unlimited a generator of power. Now, if you decide to use this unlimited generator of power called your mind and your thoughts for fear, for anger, for projection, then you're going to be having an unlimited power generator generating uh, blame and projection and attack into your life. That's a lot of power, you know. And now if you use this unlimited power generator for the purpose of extending love and gratitude, even when you don't understand, then you're going to be generating some serious love power into your life. You know, it's the same, it's the, it's the, it's the same Power. It's the same generative, generating power. It's just depending on how you do it. Like kind of like nuclear power. I was waiting for you to to give me an opportunity to jump in. I'm gonna say kind of like nuclear power. You can either light up the whole <laughs> city, right. or you can you destroy blow up the, the whole city. city. You can either light up the city, or you can destroy the whole city. That's how your mind is. That's how powerful our minds are. Our, the fundamental law of mind is that your mind has power. Your mind is power. It's generating. It's powerful. And it never sleeps. Never sleeps. And it never sleeps. The power of your mind never sleeps. And it's never, never short of power just because... Never. You know, we didn't have enough employees show up at the plant today. Exactly. And if, you're, if your life seems like it is full of deprivation and scarcity and lack, all you're seeing is how powerful your mind is to produce whatever you want to see. That's all you're seeing. You're not seeing like there's a lack in the universe and God is cruel and da da da. All you're seeing is look how powerful your mind is. Oh my God, my life is my life sucks. All I have is deprivation and lack and scarcity in my life. Wow, your mind's so powerful. You have made scarcity seem real when ain't, scarcity ain't real. That's really powerful. Wow, your mind's powerful. Your your mind has made scarcity look real when it ain't. That's powerful. Wow. All right. Then paragraph two. So the, our ego's use of projection must be fully understood before the inevitable association between projection and anger can be finally undone. If we don't understand it, mm -hmm. <coughs> no, it's do not it. just that Anna and I are like crackheads for A Course in Miracles. <laughs> we, we are hooked on this because we really uh, I can speak for both of us because I know both of us. <laughs> We're really hooked on this during three classes a night plus all the reading we do during the week and stuff because once you experience mm -hmm. the transition of the power plant, mm -hmm. what you can do with this power plant, mm -hmm. once you start seeing it, yep. you're like, man, I want to experience more of that. What else can it and, do? And then you go through the week and, and it doesn't go right. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what? What? Mm -hmm. But then you realize it's not the fault of the world outside yeah, of me. Right. It's the fault of the mind inside of me. How we use the power of our mind, our thought. And this is so critical. Mm -hmm. This first sentence of paragraph two mm -hmm. 
is that until we finally understand it, how did it say it here? Uh, the ego's use of projection must be full, oh, fully understood, not partially understood, right. not a little bit understood, not a Sunday morning understanding, but fully understood, until it's fully understood, then we can't finally right. fully undo it. And really use the real power of our minds to create the good, the beautiful, and the holy. So it's almost like, I need to understand, I need to understand um, uh, the relationship between uh, projection and my anger. Okay? You know, it's like, I still think my anger is like, I can't believe you did that. I am perceiving correctly and I'm pissed. And this is saying, ah, uh, no, you need to understand that what you're upset about, what you're angry about, is what you're projecting. You know, anger means projection. Of course, the miracle says, anger means projection. Are you angry? It's because you are projecting, you are projecting the cause of your experience onto something outside of yourself. That's what anger means. Anger means, I'm not responsible. My mind did not create that. That just happened to me. They did that to me. Mm -hmm. And that ain't right. And they need to be punished. And they need to be punished. Okay, that's what anger means. Now, the when you know the true power of your mind, what you know is, wow, my mind is powerful. I was having anger, and so look what happened. I, I manifested somebody who you know did who, who who didn't treat me right. Okay, so he's saying you've got to understand the the relationship between anger and projection. You know, anger means projection, okay? If I wasn't projecting, then I'd be like, wow, look at what I, look at what I did to myself. Look at what I chose for myself again. Hmm. Call for love. Call for love. Wow, I didn't believe I deserved love today, and so look what I manifested. Hmm. Okay. Call for love. Call for love. Spirit, will you please correct that for me? Thank you. Okay. So, um, it's in, it, we have to understand the the in the relationship between projection and our anger so that we can stop projecting our anger and creating destructive results in our lives okay I should hear up Tr Trisha Greg I know what you're saying about addicted to the course <laughs> and also Sophia said the same thing I'm addicted to the truth also yes before a lot of you even came into the to uh, mm -hmm. the classroom we were laughing at the very beginning of when we pushed the play button that we're just so grateful for all of you that you know I think it's quite amazing that <laughs> that we show up every Sunday Monday and Tuesday mm -hmm. But I find it even more amazing that so many so do you. consistently <laughs> it's do like, it. It's like, and, wow! And so, yes, it's <laughs> obvious we're all in the same addicted yes, to truth class. Exactly. The, the Course in Miracles addicts <laughs> bind the other Course in Miracles addicts. Yeah, right? and they all hang out at the same God's bar together. <laughs> God right? bar. Taking more shots of truth together. <laughs> I love it. Yes. And our lives get better together. Getting drunk on happy. <laughs> Amen to that. I love it. There's a drunk that uh, doesn't have any uh, cost or any negative ne negative effects. Mm -hmm. I love it. Shahira says, I show up to experience heaven. Right on. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So, of course, the miracles are saying the ego's use of projection has got to be fully understood before the inevitable association between projection and anger can be finally undone, okay? And what's the inevitable association between anger and projection? Uh, the Course in Miracles says a proje anger is projection, okay? Now, if you, want, if you want to undo your anger, you gotta see it's a projection. You know, that's, that's the truth. You, are you done with this anger? Has it hurt your life enough? Has it hurt you enough? Has it made deprivation and lack uh, painful enough in your life? Are you done with it? Okay, then you gotta see that anger is projection. 
because we have it backwards. Oh, we, yeah. we think, oh, we think yeah. anger comes to oh, us. Oh, yeah. Where anger is projection, we sent it out. Right. Maybe we sent it out by judging that, mm -hmm. that uh, UPS driver this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Maybe we sent it out by, you know, getting upset at somebody. There's so many times we get angry, th angry throughout the day. Yeah, and then when we do, all we did was plant the seed mm -hmm. to receive the same like kindness exactly. back. Exactly. I want some anger? Well, mm -hmm. I'll plant some anger. Right. I'll give somebody else some anger, and that will assure me that I'm going to get some anger back. And exa it's exactly the next line. So exactly what you're saying is the next line. The ego always tries to preserve the conflict. Yes through the projection, through the anger. Yeah. Anger is the ego trying to preserve the upset. Right. Okay. Now, if I didn't really want the conflict anymore, I'd be like, hmm, I wonder why I chose this again. Okay, I wonder why it is that this is showing up. I wonder why I asked for this. I wonder what this is showing to me about my own ego. Okay. That's somebody who doesn't, who's tired of the conflict. Okay. But the ego isn't tired of the conflict. The ego is addicted to conflict. We're addicted to Course in Miracles. Ego is addicted to conflict. And the ego wants conflict. The ego is always trying to preserve the conflict. That's why the ego is always projecting the anger. Mm -hmm. That's why the ego is never like, I wonder why I attracted this again. The ego is always like, you are making me feel the way I'm feeling. You are responsible for what I'm experiencing, and now you need to pay. I had a good friend up the, <clears throat> this week that came to me, shut the door, one of those <laughs> closed meeting doors, mm -hmm. and asked me, and, and this was from the heart, not joking around, how much vengeance can I give somebody without God getting <laughs> upset with me? <laughs> Because if you knew what they did, you too. And I said to this person, "Well, how much vengeance do you want to experience?" Ooh. And this is talking about the same thing. Is that's how the ego mm -hmm. preserves itself? Yeah, it preserves confidence. You feel like somebody mm -hmm. that some vengeance came to you. Someone hurt you. Hurt you, made you upset and mm -hmm. angry. So mm -hmm. what's the natural response? You want to naturally, it just makes sense, doesn't yes, it? Yes. You want to naturally give back mm -hmm. what you felt like you were given. Exactly. But what heaven says is, put on the brakes. Yeah. Stop right there. Yes. And what I had mentioned to her is, hey, you can't fix hate with more hate. Yes. You can't pour some hate into the bottle of hate right. and think, you're going to stir it up and there's going to be something different. It's still going to be hate. Exactly. You're not going to fix vengeance by pouring more vengeance into the recipe. Exactly. The only way you're going to fix it is to pour something completely different that it doesn't already have in the mixture. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we're going to, I'm sure, be going. Absolutely. To. And also, I remember you telling me that story. And when Greg told me what he said, I was like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty loving and very brave. And that, you know, you said to her, um, what you think that they did to you is what you have done. And the reason it's happening, seeming to happen to you is because that's what you had given in the past. In other words, your anger with them about what they did is projection. Mm -hmm. of what you had done in the past. And I remember you, the, the person was like, uh, uh, and she said, I know you're right. Yep. She mm -hmm. said, I know you're right. So don't be mad when the mailman, the UPS, <laughs> the of the universe, seems like it was slow in the yes. delivery and the package that you're Yes, wanting. exactly. Uh, anger is always associated with projection. So whenever you're angry, let's say you're angry right now, if you don't like the effects of the anger, which is deprivation, scarcity, pain, 
sickness, aloneness, and all the other negative things you complain about. If you don't like the effects of the anger in your life, then stop projecting it. Take responsibility for you and, and, and ask yourself, what is it, where is it that I have done this? Where is it that I have done this before? Would I condemn myself for doing that? And, uh, and that, that ends the association between the projection and the anger. You know, instead of going, look what you did to me, now you're going, have I ever done this before? Have I ever done this before? Have I ever done this before? And felt guilty about it? Oh, yes, many times. Okay, that breaks the association between the projection and the anger, and it cures the anger. And now you don't have the anger that's producing the deprivation and the scarcity and the pain and suffering in your life. And sometimes we might think, uh, let's say somebody um, cheated on you. And you say, well, I've never done that. I would have never done that. I've never done that. Oh, well, really? one of the ways that you have invited that is when you heard somebody done that, mm. you cast it a judgment on oh, the situation. Yes, indeed. And as soon as we're judging, as soon as we're condemning, I can't tell you how many people I know mm -hmm. that have said to people, you got divorced? Oh, my God. Oh, that is so selfish. How could you? That, oh, what about your kids? I mean, mm -hmm. really, come on. Mm -hmm. And five years later, this same person mm -hmm. that's condemning you mm -hmm. of what you've done yep. finds themselves in divorce court. Exactly. And again, it's it's always, the course is always asking us, what do you want? Yeah. Figure out what you want. Right. And then work from that basis. Exactly. That lady that I was talking to, my friend the other day, uh, what really turned the, the boat around for her was asking her, I said, I want you to close your, your eyes for a moment and just think, how do you feel right now about this? And she started, I said, I want you to vocalize out loud for me how you feel about it. And she was, you know, trying not to cry and share how it made her feel, how hurt it made her feel, the situation that she just experienced. And I said, now, I know that you think it would make you happier or feel better if they felt that way and you get some kind of vengeance on them, but I want you to really think about this feeling and ask yourself, do I want to feel this again <laughs> later down the road? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to cut this mm -hmm. off right now and end this story? Mm -hmm. Do I want to experience it again later or do I want to end it now? Right. And to end it now, you're going to have to end it for that other person yes. and you exactly. together. Exactly. And that's really what turned it around for her, is realizing, oh, what came is because I asked for it before, and now I have the opportunity to ask for it again, yeah. or to finally Choose stop something this else. pattern. Choose once again, stop the pattern. Stop the pattern. And you stop the pattern when you go, hey, my anger is a projection. That's how you stop the pattern. Mm -hmm. That's how you stop preserving the conflict, right? That's, you know, to preserve the pattern is to preserve the conflict. And the conflict keeps on going, going, going because you don't realize that your anger is a projection of what you don't like about yourself or what you have done and feel guilty about. And until you recognize that the anger is a projection, then the a conflict keeps on going on and on, and you go, oh, I've got this pattern. Mm -hmm. So the only way to stop the pattern uh, is to recognize the projection that that is that that is going on. Mm -hmm. You know. How many of us say to ourselves, man, how come I I always pick somebody that that mm -hmm. seemed to cheat on me? Mm -hmm. How come? Why? They're always doing Am that. I, is that the, just because that's the way women are? Yeah. Is that the way men are? They always cheat? But, well, I guess that's the way men and women are. They just cheat. 
And what we just heard, the ego, the belief system yes. that we deserve punishment, mm -hmm. which is what the ego is, is a belief mm -hmm. system. And it's a belief system that believes that we deserve punishment, yes. always tries to, to preserve itself. The it's conflict. always trying. You can see in her story mm -hmm. how the ego, the yes. belief system that she deserves punishment, yes. was trying to preserve itself by now give back him some right. vengeance and projecting onto him the cause of it right not recognizing that she was she was projecting it exactly and then and so until we go my anger is a projection of what i don't like about myself or what i think i have done taking responsibility then, exactly then that pattern will continue take responsibility exactly Beautiful. The Course in Miracles says to ask yourself this, would I uh, crucify myself for doing that? It literally says to ask yourself that actual question. You know, they hurt me. They didn't respect me. They betrayed me. Okay, uh, would, you uh, would I crucify myself anytime I have betrayed somebody? Oh, I've betrayed people before. Well, do you deserve, do you want to crucify yourself for that? No, I don't want to be crucified just because I made the mistake of crucifying somebody or whatever, betraying somebody. Well, then don't do it to them. Right. And, the, and the reason you're experiencing that so-called betrayal or attack is because you did it. And you felt guilty about it and you didn't forgive it. And that's why it seems to be happening to you. So... Take back that projection, forgive it, and then the pattern will stop. A thought that came to me last night in Anna's class that I've never had before. <clears throat> I used to read and study the Bible uh, in my younger days quite a bit. And in the Bible we hear a story about how Jesus was crucified. They were projecting <laughs> onto Jesus, mm -hmm. projecting, and they crucified him. And uh, I believe it was 30 years later that Jerusalem itself was crucified. Mm -hmm. Not to where it was said that not one stone was remaining on top of another. It was destroyed. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. It's, this, it's always the same thing. Mm -hmm. Once you start noticing the, the connection, these connections between the projection you'll see it and all the anger, over. you'll see it all over. Mm -hmm. Yes, like you'll see exactly. it in other people's lives really easy. Yes, and you'll start recognizing yes. it and connecting the dots in your own life. And then that's why I say, with you, mm -hmm. you instantly get the negative mm -hmm. thoughts, mm -hmm. and then you'll realize, oh, why would I do this to myself? Yes. And then you'll turn about face the other direction and and you'll let go of it because it's not what you want. Exactly. So true. And I just, Shahira, I love what you're saying. Shahira is like, my anger is projection. I have maintained this conflict until today. Tonight I take responsibility. I forgive this. I am innocent. Right on, Shahira. That is how you do it. That's how you break a pattern. That's how you break a pattern. And this is how you break the pattern the association between anger and a projection, okay? And Irene asked a question over here on the other screen. Uh, yes, but what about forgiving the character? Mm -hmm. What does that create? And she says, yes, but what about forgiving the cheater? What oh, the cheater, I'm sorry. I yes. don't have my glasses on. Mm -hmm. The cheater, what does that create? Well, what a great question. Yeah, really. When you forgive the cheater, what does that create? Hmm, what does that create? It means I forgive the part of me that I perceive was the cheater. And then guess what? I don't manifest the cheater anymore. I don't, be, I, I, I don't manifest myself as a cheater and I don't manifest them as the cheater. She here says, what cheater? You know, the one who, the one who betrayed you. In a relationship. In a relationship, you know. Uh, what happens to that, you know. It's like, okay, let's say there's a cheater. They cheated on me, okay. Okay, and I'm pissed. I'm pissed, and I'm asking Greg. I'm more than I'm pissed. asking Greg, 
Uh, how much can I get vengeance without God being mad at me? Because <laughs> they cheated on me and now I'm pissed and I want vengeance. And I'm hurt. And I'm hurt. I can't. I really I'm, hurt. I'm losing sleep. I hurt. I can't function. I can't hurt. During the day because I just have this loop yes. playing in my head constantly. Exactly. Of how I trusted this person. Yes. How I thought we had a solid yes. relationship. Yes. How I thought this, how I thought that, how yes. I thought this. Yes. And all of a sudden now they have shown they've made a fool of me. Yeah, they've made a fool of me. They've maybe they've even embarrassed me. Yes. That other people Same thing. have uh, known about yes, it also. Right, exactly. And that is, that's a uh, really seems to be a tough one. That's mm -hmm. the one that ego wants to bring us and go, Well, you can't fix that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, exactly. The ego wants to preserve that grievance. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I have a friend, we have a mutual friend that we know uh, that had a cheating situation in their life uh, where they walked into the actual act of what happened to them mm -hmm. with uh, their mate and, their, and uh, who their mate was mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. was uh, uh, a very a family quick, member. close family. Oh, member. ouch! And so now you don't just ouch. have the mate; mm. you got the family. Oh. What? Ouch! And the court wants me to forgive. Oh no! Oh, come mm -hmm. on! No, no we're no, not going to no, just no, be no, vengeance. No. We're going to get a double barrel shotgun. I know why they made a double barrel shotgun now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> had two barrels, two people, <laughs> and so what? What? Uh, to be honest, I didn't know what to say to this person. <laughs> you know, when this came up, I was like thinking, uh, oh yeah, business. That kind of is justified. Yeah, this is kind of justified. <laughs> and luckily, Spirit was channeling through Anna and and said, well, what, what do you think of your life right now? <laughs> well, I love my life right now. <laughs> oh, really? Why do you love your life? Well, because I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. <laughs> Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, would you be doing this and be doing that? Mm -hmm. What you've always wanted to do? Mm -hmm. If you were still in relationship with that person? Mm -hmm. Because of what happened, that person released you mm -hmm. to go on in your life with something else. Exactly. And it seemed painful at first because you thought it was horrible. Right. But now looking back, look where you're at now. Yes. And you could have seen this person, like their eyes were like, You are so right. I mean, I would have never had the love of living right now if that life. person hadn't cheated. Oh, and they literally went in two second flash thanking those people, literally out loud. Thank thanking, you, cheaters. Thank you, cheaters. Thank you, betrayers. I would never be where I'm at now. Thank you, adulterers. Oh, wow. <laughs> I should send you flowers. Mm -hmm. And they were being serious. For real. I mean, and tears so, of joy and release. Yes. Yeah. We, we don't realize the course isn't like this. The course isn't like everything is working out for good. Oh, except for when that happens. Mm -hmm. But don't worry to get bad. No. Eventually. It's not what it says. Right. It Take says it. that everything, all the time. Yeah. Is always great. It's working out for working your good. Out good. It doesn't matter if you can see it. Everything is happening for your own best interest. It doesn't matter if your your eyesight can only see this far and you can't see as far as heaven. That's can. right. Exactly. And if you knew that everything was happening for your own best interest, what would happen to your anger? What would happen to that desire for revenge that's that's hurting you that's making your life toxic you know if you really trusted the plan and the will of love for you um, then anger would not be a thing that you'd be using to make toxic your own life and your relationships and when Anna says if you really trusted yeah. what what we're trying to learn under the new belief system is not the trust in the mate. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's no. the trick. Or the circumstances. Or the job. Right. Or the bank account. Mm -hmm. But trust in 
our source yes. and creator. Just no loves matter plan. what happens. And then yes. that way your mate can do whatever they want to mm -hmm. do. And if they do cheat, mm -hmm. it's for your own best interest. It's for your own it best interest. It releases you. Even if you can't see it right now, you're mm -hmm. thinking, well, I don't want to lose this person. I love this person. Mm -hmm. Well, so you thought. So you thought. Right. So you thought you loved yeah. somebody that didn't really respect mm -hmm. you. So was that really love? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Okay, we uh, we we did a little bit of a uh, of a uh, revealing there. Yeah, we did. But these are our friends. Sorry, friends that were we were, were ratting out on you, but don't be afraid to share your any, stuff with we us. Didn't but use we didn't use any names. Exactly, and mostly we're talking about ourselves. Yeah, and what we're sharing is stuff that happens all around the world all the time anyway. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, truly, we are one mind. <laughs> truly. There's nothing that we've ever experienced that you haven't experienced and that you haven't experienced that we haven't experienced. That we are truly one mind. All right. All right. So the ego always tries to preserve conflict. Or the pattern. Okay. Now, our ego is very ingenious in devising ways that seem to diminish our pattern because the ego doesn't want you to find your pattern or your conflict so intolerable that you will insist on giving that conflict, that pattern up. So the ego was doing what? The ego is very ingenious in diminishing your conflict or your pattern, but it doesn't want you to insist on giving up the pattern or the problem. It just wants to numb you to your pattern. The ego just wants to diminish the pain of your problem the ego, so that you're numb. The ego is very smart. Ingenious. It never wants you to connect the dot. Don't want you to that connect. you're doing exactly. this to yourself. Exactly. Because if you did, mm -hmm. you would stop mm -hmm. doing this mm -hmm. and that would be the end exactly. of the ego. And so the ego is ingenious at devising ways to diminish or to numb the pain of the conflict so that you don't go this hurts i'm done what will it take oh i have to take responsibility for this pain fine i can't blame it on bob fine oh, man fine i'll do it because the pain is so great the ego doesn't want the pain you to experience the pain of your problem and your pattern so uh, intensely that you insist on giving up that pattern it wants to just kind of numb it down a little bit so that you're like, oh, whatever, it's all right. So that you don't insist on giving up the conflict, the pattern. So that you don't insist on going, oh, this pain's coming from my projection? Fine, I take full responsibility for this. This is what I am doing to myself and I ask for the correction right now. The ego don't want you to do that. And so it's very ingenious in just numbing you out and diminishing, seeming to diminish the pain of the pattern that you're doing to yourself. Okay, so it says the ego is therefore trying to persuade you that it, the ego, can free you of your pattern lest you give up the ego and free yourself. Now that's what the ego is up to. And the ego is very ingenious. Like Shahira says, I rationalized, rationalized, and rationalized. That's what the ego does. It rationalizes why it doesn't really hurt that bad, why it's that not big of a problem, why it's really okay, oh, it doesn't really hurt, oh, and I'm so distracted, or so drunk, or so whatever, that I don't even notice the pain, okay? The ego is very ingenious at diminishing the conflict so that you don't go, this freaking hurts, and you're saying this is coming from my own projection. I'm done. I take full responsibility for this right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because when you take responsibility for it, you are freeing yourself. You are giving your ego up and you're freeing yourself. And the ego does not want you to do that. And Irene, of course, when you were asking earlier, what good does it do to forgive the cheater? Mm -hmm. And for most of us, when we hear that, is 
to forgive somebody that did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's the real cruncher right. of A Course in Miracles is nobody did anything wrong. Right. All they did was set you free. Exactly. And yeah. yes. so that forgiveness <laughs> is is mm -hmm. to see it another way. Like I'm projecting. That's a forget. He's like, I, inst instead of I forgive you for betraying me, you I, know, de you know, yeah. good down dirty dog. Thank you. Okay. They, <laughs> they, what a course of miracles is advocating is I projected that. I I have done that in my past, and I felt guilty for doing that, and I have not forgiven myself for doing that. And I believe I'm guilty for doing that. And that's why it showed up as a pattern in my life. That's what forgiveness really means. And I asked for that. And I Even asked for that. if I can't see exactly. it. Even I if I close that. my eyes for, for 90 <laughs> seconds and try to connect the dots, I couldn't. Yes. Even if I don't see the connection. Exactly. I, I ask for that. I ask for that. I ask Nobody for that. is a victim. And nobody's a victim. I am responsible for what I am experiencing. I am responsible for what I am feeling. And everything that seems seems to be happening to me, I ask for. And I received it exactly as I asked, even if I don't see it. And Sophia, you're right. The ego is a bitch. <laughs> and the ego wants to make you... It's, it's bitch. bitch. Exactly. Okay. And so and the ego is trying to persuade us that it can free us of this pattern lest we give the ego up and free ourselves. So ego's like, ego don't want us to give up the ego. Ego just wants us to go, I can't believe they did. They did what? Oh my God. You do. You are entitled to some vengeance. I'll, I'll help you with this, Anna. I got some good vengeance. I've got the best vengeance. I'll help you with the vengeance, Anna. I can free you from your pain, Anna. Let me tell you how you can get vengeance, and you'll be free from your anger, Anna. You'll be free from your hurt. That's what the ego is all about. And using the ego's own warped version of the laws of mind, the laws of God, the ego is going to utilize the power of your mind only to defeat your mind's real purpose. How's the ego going to do that? It's going to project the conflict or the pattern from your mind to their minds in an attempt to persuade you that you've gotten rid of your pattern. That's not my pattern, that's their pattern. That's how the ego works. It's going to use the power, it's going to use the laws of the mind to convince you that you've gotten rid of your pattern your problem of being betrayed by projecting that pattern of betrayal onto them. They're the betrayer. They're the bad person. They're the bad, guilty person. And now I've gotten all my friends to agree with that. And so, hallelujah, it's not me that is the guilty person. It's them that are the betrayer. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not the betrayer. They're the betrayer. Mm -hmm. They're the cheater. I'm, I'm not the cheater. They're the cheater. And then that's the ego's goal is to get you to uh, use the laws of your mind to persuade you that you've gotten rid of your own guilt and now it's in them. Mm -hmm. And the ego's like, yes! <laughs> and so the seed remains in the ground. Yeah, baby. <clears throat> we haven't gotten rid of the source. Yes. When we're operating under the belief system of the yes, ego. Yes, exactly. And, and now the ego has preserved the pattern. Right. And that's the ego's one goal. Preserve the conflict. That's the ego's one goal. Preserve the problem. Preserve the pattern. Preserve the conflict. Don't get rid of it. Don't heal it by taking responsibility for it and forgiving it in yourself. Don't do that. Keep the pattern. Keep the problem going by projecting it onto them. Yeah, doesn't that anger feel good? Doesn't that hate feel good? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that upset feel good? Doesn't mm -hmm. that fear and being scared feel good? Yeah. So keep it going. Exactly. So this week when we get angry or upset or feeling vulnerable, mm -hmm. this week when that starts happening, how about we remember to say to ourselves, even if we don't understand it right away, 
do I want to preserve the thing? Yeah. I'm angry now. Do I want to preserve it? Do you want to preserve want to it? Do you want it more of it? Do I want more of it? Mm -hmm. Sure, maybe it'll go away today, mm -hmm. but because I wasn't willing to deal with the source of it, mm -hmm. I just asked for it again, and maybe it'll yes. show up two days later from now, maybe two weeks later, whenever, mm -hmm. and every time it's the same story. When it happened, mm -hmm. I'm going to thank it coming to me and it happened to me. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? I get angry all over again. And it's worse. And mm -hmm. I plant more seeds of anger again. Mm -hmm. And then in the future, it's going to show up. And that's how the ego preserves its life. Mm -hmm. it preserves the conflict. Plant some more of me. Mm -hmm. Plant some more of me so I can live tomorrow. Exactly. Rather than us realizing what's going on and saying, you know what? I think I'm going to pull the ego up, not cut it off at above the ground, I'm going to pull it up from underneath the ground where the source is, from the root of this Which is problem, so that I'm not going to be angry in a week yes. or two from now, because, and like I told my friend this last week, when you plant something different in the ground, mm -hmm. plant something different, mm, really different. give that cheating person something that they would that would blow their mind that would be really different yeah and some love mm -hmm. because if you give them some love not only are you going to now turn the tide you're going to turn the entire ship around for yourself you actually even though you don't think they deserve it you actually turn it around for them exactly and they deserve it as much as you to get out of this loop Exactly. And if you if, if you were taking responsibility for what you're experiencing, like the Course in Miracles says to do, I am responsible for what I'm experiencing. If you were to take responsibility for your anger and realize that I am angry because I'm projecting what I have done and not forgiven myself for, um, then, uh, then it would be gone it would be gone and you would be all right um if you were perceiving correctly not only would you not be angry but you would recognize that this was your savior this is the universe coming to give you the freedom and the joy and the love that you do deserve but that you were depriving yourself of you know, in that relationship where your friend walked in on someone who was cheating on you with a family member, then, you know, if you were perceiving correctly, it would be like, uh, that person was my savior. If you're perceiving correctly, all you'll see is your savior, a gift. So anger is always a, um, anger is always us hiding from ourselves our greatest gratitude, our greatest reason for gratitude. Mm -hmm. That's what anger is doing. Here is my greatest reason for gratitude. Here's my savior come to free me from how I've been depriving myself, but I don't recognize that. And instead, I'm projecting my anger instead. Because when your savior shows up in the form of cheating, yeah. <laughs> betrayal, you you don't realize that mm -hmm. they're they're showing up with a with really a platter. Mm -hmm. Yes. A, an empty, a gift. An empty platter. Freedom. And the platter, you get to decide. Mm -hmm. It's real tempting mm -hmm. to put some anger on that platter. Oh yeah. So you can have some more for you know, when you get that midnight craving tonight, mm -hmm. you can get some more of that anger out to eat. Yes. Or they show up and, and you realize, oh, I see what's mm -hmm. going on here. You know what? I don't like this way this feels mm -hmm. and I don't want any more of that. So I'm going to refuse it. Exactly. And so, and so what I want, um, so let's see. So while you're reading, okay, I'm Greg. Gonna... So while Greg is fixing something, what I re really want to you to hear and um, what, I, what, what I really want you to hear and what I want you to remember is this. Because um, that's what I, this is what I want to remember. Is that anger means projection. Okay? 
So real simple. Anger means projection. Anger means projection. Anger means projection. Anger means projection. Okay? So that, that and we want to say it, say it, say it over so that next time we experience anger, that we go, oh, I, uh, because I said it so many times now that I'm experiencing anger, I heard projection. This anger is projection. My anger is projection. My anger is projection. What am I projecting? My anger is projecting. What am I projecting? And so to work it like that, because that is the only way that you will break that connection between anger and projection. It's the only way to uh, cure the anger and the projection. It's the only way to break the pattern. If every time you get angry, you keep on projecting and you don't take responsibility for that anger, it just means that the pattern and the anger and the conflict just keeps on going. But if you don't want that pattern to keep going, then when you feel the anger, you got to go, this anger is projecting. What am I projecting? You know? Before. Yeah. What have I projected before? Exactly. What am I projecting on? I'm mad because they did that, blah, 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 blah. Oh, really? Okay. Now, have you ever done that before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I... I have, I, I have done that before. And, and uh, did you forgive yourself when you did that? No. Oh, I gave myself so much guilt. And then I hide it, I hid it, and then I hid it, and then I projected it. All right. Or did you want to shoot yourself with the double mm, barrel shotgun? Yes, I did. No, I was okay. merciful right. on myself. Yeah. I gave myself all kinds of reasons mm -hmm. why I did it. Right, exactly. Of course, because they behaved that way and they right, did that exactly. and they treated me like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I shouldn't have done it. But of course, there's all these, as she was saying earlier, mm -hmm. rationalize, rationalize, mm -hmm. rationalize. Right, exactly. And it, when I'm angry at somebody, what if I was to say to myself, um, uh, uh, I'm projecting onto them that they are responsible for how I feel about myself. How I feel about myself is my choice. How I feel about myself has nothing to do with them. And But my anger is I'm projecting responsibility for how I feel about myself onto them. That's projection. But if I wasn't projecting onto them responsibility for my happiness, I wouldn't be angry. Good point. They are not responsible for my happiness. They're not responsible for whether I feel lovable and loving. And so if I wasn't projecting onto them responsibility for how I felt, then there would be no anger. There would be gratitude. Thank you for showing that to me. <laughs> thank yeah. you for revealing that thank, to me. Thank you for thank showing you. me that I made an idol out of you. Yes. And I started worshiping you for my happiness. Which means, thank you for showing me that I wasn't loving myself. I didn't see myself as loving and lovable. Thank you very much. I really, uh, I wasn't aware of that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Grat so in that case, gratitude replaces anger. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. So it's 821. Yeah. So maybe we'll stop there. All right. And um, and uh, we did a whopping two paragraphs. We did two paragraphs. Amazing. Out of? Out of seven. Okay. So that, boys and girls, that's your homework assignment is mm -hmm. to read the remaining five paragraphs when you get a chance. Yes. Because uh, we just barely touched the surface. Uh, no of the subject here. I know. But actually, we actually went deep into... And, we, th and you guys went deep. You guys went deep. We, we went deep into uh, anger is projection. Anger yes. means projection. And that's very important because it says the ego's use of projection must be fully understood before the inevitable association between projection and anger can be finally undone. So what we just talked about was very, 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 very important in the toward the goal of not uh, preserving the pattern. Right. The patterns that 
we're so angry at, that we don't realize are our patterns. When our, our patterns show up, we get so angry. Yeah, our patterns. Yeah, our patterns show up and we're like, oh my God, all men are blah, blah, blah. And our patterns show up, oh, women are such and such. You know, our patterns show up and we get angry. Uh, this is teaching us how to set it up where when our patterns come up, we don't get angry and thus preserve or continue our pattern. When our pattern shows up and we feel the anger, instead of just projecting that anger, we take responsibility for it, which does what? It ends the pattern, which ends the anger. So, pretty valuable. Pretty valuable. Pretty valuable. Very valuable. All right. So, um... Uh, Trisha says, uh, what's your Venmo so I can make a donation for class? Thank you for asking. If you would like to make a financial expression of appreciation for our class, then you can go to Venmo or Zelle or PayPal and just put in my email address, AnnaKujawa1.com or Greg's email address, uh, no, don't complicate it. Uh, okay, no, don't complicate it. Okay, great. Um, and, um, and thank you for your uh, loving financial expressions of appreciation for this class. Also, I love it. Demi says, deep dive, patterns show up, dispel anger, take responsibility. You got it. Thank you so much. Hi, Laura. Lovely to see you. Greg Wallace, Jerry Savage. Welcome. Thank you for joining our Course in Miracles Healing Circle. We appreciate you so much. Also, um, so Sundays we do. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you, Trisha, for saying that. And hey, I was just having a thought today. I haven't shared it with Anna, but <clears throat> I was wondering if we came to Palisades, if that uh, yoga studio you have is cat free because Anna has a cat allergy. And maybe we could come to uh, Palisades for a day or two mm -hmm. and we're timing around the classes and doing mm -hmm. class from there. Like, like, beautiful. like we've done before. Mm -hmm. Hang out in the hot tub, mm -hmm. eat some good food, talk some good course. We had so much fun with Trisha and Chris when we, we went to Palisade we and did some did. great classes. We had so much fun. And uh, Trisha told me that she kept her uh, massage yoga studio cat free for us. Yay! So, alright. So, Coming on down, Trisha. Let's we'll start making some plans. She says, yes, it's cat free. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, so Greg and I do Sunday, Facebook, 7 p.m., Transforming Relationships Through Course of Miracles. Monday, I do uh, Practical and Healing Applications of A Course of Miracles on Facebook, 7 p.m., uh, in person at the Rocky Mountain Miracle Center. So if you are in Denver and you would like to come for a live in-person Course in Miracles class, come to the Rocky Mountain Miracle Center, Monday, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. It's also on Facebook. And then Tuesdays, like tonight, 7 p.m. on Facebook. And, um, and also, if you are somebody uh, who is looking for some um, psychotherapeutic support but from a Course in Miracles perspective, or you know somebody, who could use that, then check out my website, AnnaKujawa.com, and learn about my holistic counseling pro, uh, practice, Miracle Psychotherapeutics, and text my number that you find on my website or on Messenger, and let me know and we'll set something up, okay? All right, Trisha says, come on down to the orchard. Yeah, and if you are somebody who's watching from Palisade and you're looking for some Course in Miracles gatherings, then let us know. Uh, reach out to Trisha Sproles, who's yeah. here on our thing. Yeah, anywhere around Grand Junction. Exactly. Beautiful. All right. That sounds like a song. Come on down to, to the orchard <laughs> for some miracles. And it's cat free. And it's cat free. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been suffering too long from your anger? And you want to be free. <laughs> All right. So you guys are so amazing. We so appreciate your 
uh, using your very precious time and energy to join this healing circle. If you feel so motivated and inspired, share this class on your on your Facebook page, and um, so that more more people can can hear these loving, release from anger, release from guilt ideas. All right. Okay. Love you guys. Love you guys. See you next class. See you when we do.